All right. Would you state your name, please? Brett Fermel, Your Honor. All right. And your date of birth? 122573. Okay. And we have counsel here. Uh, John Penner appearing on behalf of Mr. Fermel, Your Honor. All right. And from the state? Jeffrey Pitts, Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Okay. Let's get us uh, squared away so that we all understand the charges and court dates and all of that. Then we may talk about conditions of release. Mr. Frummel, I need to advise you that you have been arrested for uh, four counts of trafficking in the uh, identity of another person, a Class II felony, uh, two counts of forgery, Class IV felonies, and four counts of taking the identity of another person, Class IV felonies. Um, you have counsel, so we won't be appointing an attorney for you. I have a status conference set February 6th at 8.30 a.m. and a preliminary hearing set February 12th at uh, 8.30 a.m. Those will be in the uh, RCC downtown. Um, I'll entertain counsel's comments on uh, conditions of release. Fitz? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, this is a very difficult case. Um, in terms of, at least for the state, at least for me, in terms of asking for bond. I'm going to request bond for Mr. Frimmel in the amount of $40,000 or higher. I understand Mr. Frimmel has ties to the community, has two restaurants, doesn't have a history. I think Mr. Penner is going to very uh, eloquently state those reasons. Um, and I understand the safety of the community is tangential given the fact that some of these numbers can belong to other people and they can have We've seen another people hurt by identity theft when their information is used wrongfully and also just overall uh, when false information is put out on the records it does a drain on our commercial system I know in terms of the taking the identity issues and all things that we've also had but one of the things that I also is that in terms of this system justice and all uh, we have other people who have been before this court on taking identity of the other forgery who aren't in this country. Obviously, their ties to the community are much different than Mr. Frimmel's. However, they have had bonds, they have had deportations, and I don't know whether the person at the top gets a pass because he's had been here longer while the person um, who's been working and such, uh, they go to jail. It just it seems like there's something that's not quite fair there. I understand in terms of um, the contacts are different in that, but uh, even in that situation, given the um, severity of the charges with the four class twos and six class fours, and the extent of time that this isn't just one item, but this seems to be a pattern over time, um, I think a $40,000 bond in this case is appropriate given all the other comments that I've made. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Frimmel is 40 years old, and he's lived in Arizona for 35 years. Um, he has extensive family support in Arizona, and um, uh, his, uh, I spent most of the day on the phone with his wife, Gina, and his mother, Marcella, both of whom live in Arizona. He has three minor children, ages 3, 12, and 17, all of whom have spent their entire lives in Arizona and go to school in Arizona. Um, he has absolutely no felony history. Um, in the event that he uh, were to be convicted of any or all these charges, it would be probation eligible because he has no felony history. Uh, he owns a home in Arizona. He owns two, uh, two successful restaurants in Arizona. Uh, he currently has about 150 employees, all of whom are likely to lose their job in the event that uh, he is in custody for any sort of an extended uh, period of time. Um, there was originally a raid um, by the uh, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office in July, and Mr. Frimmel has known about this uh, incident and these potential charges have been hanging over his head since July. Uh, he could easily and lawfully have left the state. He was not under arrest. There were no release orders or even left the country. Um, he hired me. Uh, I've been hired on this since July, uh, which is a strong indication of his desire to uh, remain in the jurisdiction and, and to fight these charges. Um, he went to work, and um, he took care of his family. Um, 
We have had numerous contacts in this case with the investigating officers. I've talked on the phone. It's Detective Henderson. They knew where to find him. When they went to arrest him, they found him at work, where he spends 70 or 80 hours a week. The case, not to get into facts, but we do believe the case is very defensible. Your Honor, it's a little bit offensive, frankly, that the state waits six months to even bother to charge this case, and then after waiting six months, requests a $40,000 bond for someone with Mr. Frimmel's tied to the community. This is my 22nd year practicing criminal law, and I don't know that I've ever had a client with more significant ties to the community. Obviously, Your Honor, this case is, based on the charges, bailable as a matter of right. This is not a situation where anyone's been threatened, where there's someone here saying that they think they're in danger. The only basis to set a bond in this case is to secure appearance, and frankly, it's not necessary in this case. If Mr. Frimmel didn't want to stay and fight these charges, he had ample opportunity to leave. We were aware of this before it was even filed. The state's arguments, these release issues are decided on a case-by-case basis, based on the individual facts, the individual crimes, and the individual's ties to the community. What other people may or may have not gotten, especially if those folks don't have ties to the community, is irrelevant, and I frankly don't understand the state's argument about damage to commerce. That's not one of the release factors either. Mr. Frimmel is an excellent candidate for an own recognizance release, based on his ties in the community, based upon his lack of criminal record, based upon his family, based upon his employment, and based upon the fact that he stayed here for six months, hiring a lawyer immediately knowing this was coming. Vince, any last words? Yes, Your Honor. The commerce argument was meant to show that there was danger to the community, safety to the community by the engagement of such acts, and the potential to continue to do them in the future. Thank you. All right. I guess my analysis is, yes, there is a lot of harm to the community done by people who commit these crimes. I see that more as a sentencing issue than I do a release issue. The two main things that the court wants to look at in setting a bond or a high bond as requested by the state is, does he pose a danger to the community in the future, and is he likely to flee? And I guess I look at this, and I had come in here thinking to release Mr. Frimmel on his own recognizance. That was what was recommended by pretrial services. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if indeed he is convicted, and if he indeed has caused a lot of harm to the community, then he may be looking at substantial punishment. But we'll leave that for that court. My considerations are a little bit different. So we are going to release you on your own recognizance. There will be other terms and conditions of release which will appear on your release order. Please read those carefully. Don't run afoul of those, or we may reconsider the court's order here today. Okay? Understood. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Now, is number 12 ready to go? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you.